Let's review what we've covered in the previous three videos. A function usually has a name. This function has the name print height. This function has the name get today's date. Function names usually reflect what the function does. It's a good way to name functions. A function always has at least one line of instructions. Usually the instructions are enclosed in a pair of curly braces. So my first function here has only one instruction and my second function has several instructions. A function may have one or more parameters. If it has parameters, they appear as variable names inside the parentheses following the function name. A function does not have to have any parameters, but the parentheses are still required and they are completely empty if there's no parameters. So there's not even a space in between those two parentheses. A function may return a value, and if it does, it's going to have a return statement, beginning with the keyword return, ending with a semicolon, always, and after the keyword return, it's got the value that will be returned. But a return statement is not required. This function does not return anything. Some functions don't have names. They are called anonymous functions. They cannot be called on a new line of code, whereas functions that have names can be called by using their name. So let's run these two functions and see what they do. So we run this function by giving it two values that will be used in the function, putting the values given into these parameters. And what it does is it console logs a string of text, and there you see what it console logs. It doesn't return anything. When a function returns something, like this one, normally we're going to store that value in a variable. And we can say, get today's date, I can copy that. So I have stored whatever was returned in a new variable named today, and then I can use that variable elsewhere in the code uh, to use the value that I've retrieved from that function. The functions that are given as examples when we're learning, and the functions that you use when you're solving beginner problems are short and simple. As you gain more skill with JavaScript, your functions will have more instructions in them and they will also call other functions.